Okay, guys, welcome again in the last part. Let me take a sip of the water. And yeah, let's go. So, what did I want to do? Okay, so first thing we can do is going to post, -pro post processing stuff, which is here. And we can enable some post processing. So, the ambient occlusion was enabled before. It, it is very slight, but it's visible as you can see. Uh, we can add the bloom. So, you can see that, uh, yeah, we have a bloom on the top of our model because this is the most li lightened part and I don't want that much light so we can uh, increase the threshold to some bigger number 1.5 maybe 1.3 is okay 1.3 is okay it's very nice and uh, let's move on depth of field if you want depth of field you have to also have the camera maybe we can add the camera first so if shift a to add the camera and it is uh, on the default position so in the middle of the female so female torso sorry guys i didn't mean to say that and we can move uh, move it back and as you can see it is very small so we can go to the output section which is under the post-processing stuff and we can increase the resolution to uh, 2k i think 2k is okay so 2048 and 2048 and yeah it, now it looks like a square and first thing we want to do is going to the other um, panel which is object data uh, this is quite confusing a bit but yeah, Blender made it that way and we have to accept that and we want to now change the type to orthographic and you can see that it is a lot bigger and if, if you click zero on the numpad we can go to the uh, border of the camera which is, so we can see that it is too small right now so we can increase the orthographic scale to make it bigger and also we can shift it on the Y axis a bit to fit perfectly in the center. So yeah, so we have our camera done. So let's move back to the post-processing panel. So render panel. So yeah, as you can see, I enabled depth of field and you can see that it added some depth of field. And yeah, it looks really nice. But for now, I will disable it because we want to enable other textures and not other textures, other properties. So let's move on to the next ones. We don't want screen space reflections because we don't have any uh, environment. Motion blur, uh, no, because we don't move our camera. Holometric, uh, basically I, I always use this, but in this render, render I will not because I want my render to be very minimalistic so and stylized so i will leave it off let's move on to hair no there's no hair and uh, shadows panel is very important because um, we have a very important property here which is called soft shadows and and finally now we can fix the problem with the shadows that we had before so if we create if you can toggle soft shadows, you can see that it blends our shadows together on our mesh. And finally now you can actually see the, the translucent uh, part that I was talking about. So here you can see it better. And yeah, it, it adds a lot of uh, details to our model and more silhouette, more rim light and it, it looks, it just looks better. So let's move on to the next one, which is indirect lighting. No, we don't uh, use that because we don't want to bake our light. So uh, here you can change the alpha to the transparent and basically uh, it will make that 
our background will be transparent when we will render our uh, model so we so we can basically put it on the photoshop and add some uh, different background that we made okay so let's go to the color management and here uh, we can change the look of of the what the hell sorry guys <laughs> my phone okay so let's move to look uh, under the color management and we can change from base contrast to high contrast and now you can see it looks even better because it's more saturated and it, it has a, a lot of more contrast on our model maybe the bottom part is is not that uh, lightened but we can change it very easily by selecting one of the lights for example I, I select the bottom and the back one and let's go to the side view let's duplicate it and let's move it to the front let's see yeah it looks a lot i think maybe not a lot better but better and uh, i still want the shadow that we had before so i will go to the light properties and maybe change the energy to something smaller so five so you you have this nice gradient from black to white maybe seven guys maybe seven so the the bottom part is less uh, lightened and the top uh, top part is more lightened so the focus will be <laughs> on on the yeah top part yeah so let's go back to the render and actually guys we are done with the post-processing stuff we can also uh, change the exposure to make it more bright but i don't want that i will keep it at one no it, it was 0 0.5 and gamma also so gamma uh, defines how how much white will be in the render and how much white or black so if i increase it it will be a lot of white if i decrease it there will be uh, less so if I, one was yeah one was the default and i exposure it was zero i think yeah exposure was zero and actually i can decrease the gamma a bit by to 0 0.8 now it looks even better and that will be it guys and yeah <laughs> also one more thing sorry guys for, for confusion uh, you have the curves and here you can actually change the color of of the tones so if you increase the red i don't understand uh, i don't uh, understand this a bit because uh, when you decrease it then you have a red and if you are increasing increasing it you have the opposite and you can play with the values here sorry there sorry guys so just play with the values till, till you like it and you can achieve some really nice results if i keep it at zero for now i won't use the curves but you can use them and uh, the last last i promise the last thing we have to do is going to world tab and here you have the property that is called color and basically it's the color of our background and this color will affect our model so now it is some gray and we want to change it to some dark red so it will look more like a skin and you can see now that it affects our model and yeah you can see the green tones here but i don't want green i want red because it's the color of the skin so i will leave it on the red like this let's uh toggle overlays and here's our model and it, it looks great let's save the file and the last part 
last one really last one is to render our image so here click render and uh, click render image so this should pop on your screen uh, it popped on my second screen and I will drag it onto my screen now yeah and here's the our final final result so save it guys and this is transparent so you can put it anywhere on the photoshop uh, let's call it tutorial oh my gosh render tutorial render and yeah this is the end of the series guys i hope you liked it and uh, see you guys in in some future videos so goodbye